Hello. In this video, we are going to do the laws of chemical combination. There are five laws of chemical combination. They are the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions or composition, the law of multiple proportions, the Gay-Lussac's law and the Avogadro's law. In this video, we are going to do three and in the next one, I'll explain the next two. The law of conservation of mass was given by Antoine Lavoisier in 1789. Well, he studied the combustion of gases in experiments which are famously known as the Lavoisier experiments. And what did the law say? That matter can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. Which means that if you take reactants and you react them, a chemical reaction takes place between them and you get the products and you weigh the reactants and the products before and after the reaction, their weights should be the same. So matter is neither created nor destroyed, it only changes form, just as we talk about energy. So matter can neither be created nor be destroyed. This was the law of conservation of mass given by Antoine Lavoisier. The next law is the law of definite proportions or definite compositions. This was given by a scientist called Joseph Proust. The statement of this law is that a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by weight. In other words, the composition of a compound always remains fixed irrespective of the source of that compound. In other words, if you take, let us say, water from the tap or you collect some rainwater or you get water from a stream or you get water from the ocean, purify whatever forms you, wherever you got the water from and then check the water molecule, what does it consist of? We find that the water molecule invariably consists of hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of the mass percentage, hydrogen is 11% by mass and oxygen is 89% by mass. What did Proust do? He carried out an experiment, he worked on cupric carbonate and he took a natural sample and a synthetic sample. And he carried out, found out the mass percentages of all the composite elements. He found that copper in cupric car carbonate is 51.35%, oxygen is 9.74% and carbon is 38.91%. And this percentage remained the same irrespective of the source of the copper carbonate, the cupric carbonate that he had or which he carried out the tests on. Another thing that I told you about water. So take any compound, it has the um, elements which combine in a fixed ratio by mass and therefore the, that ratio always remains fixed whatever be the source of that particular compound. The next law is the law of multiple proportions. I want you to just focus on the language of this, um, this law. This was given by Dalton in 1803. He said that if two elements can combine to form more than one compound, then the masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of the other element bear a simple whole number ratio to each other. I'll repeat it. If two elements can combine to form more than one compound, if two elements combine, for example, water, uh, sorry, hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water and they also combine to form hydrogen peroxide. Water has the formula H2O and hydrogen peroxide has the formula H2O2. So, if two elements can combine to form more than one compound, then the masses of one of these elements that combines with a fixed mass of the other. If the masses of one of these elements is fixed, then the masses of the other element which combine in different ways with the, in both the compounds, they also should have a simple whole number ratio to each other. Now the example that we took was water and hydrogen peroxide. The formula of water is H2O and hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. You see in both the molecules H2, there are two atoms of hydrogen. So if you have two grams, we take the molar mass let's say, if you take two grams of hydrogen in water, then there should be 16 grams of oxygen in water. In hydrogen peroxide, if we have 2 grams of hydrogen, then there should be 32 grams of 
oxygen. Now, this is if two elements combine to form more than one compound, then the ratio of one of these elements which combines with a fixed ratio of the other, a fixed mass of the other, hydrogen is fixed, it is two, but it is oxygen which has different masses. So the ratio of these two, 16 to 32, would be 16 is to 32, is 1 is to 2. They bear a simple ratio with each other. Well, at that time, they did not know that specific atoms should be there in every molecule and hence the masses can only be a multiplication of that number. So if oxygen has a mass of 16 grams, two oxygens should have a mass of uh, 32 grams, actually not in grams if we, I'm talking of molar masses here. Similarly, in this compound, sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, sulfur is 32 grams, the molar mass of sulfur is 32 grams, there are two atoms of oxygen which means there should be 32 grams of oxygen and in sulfur trioxide there should be 48 grams of oxygen. So 32 is to 48 would be a ratio of 2 is to 3. So, we understand from the law of multiple proportions that when two atoms combine to form more than two compounds, then the masses of one of these which combine with the fixed mass of the other should be your simple whole number ratios to each other. So, this was the law of multiple proportions. Now, in the next video, we do the next two laws of chemical combination, that is the Avogadro's law and the Gay-Lussac's law of gaseous volumes. Well, thank you for watching.